Hello friends. I'm going to allow myself to just speak freely. I'm really not sure how much YouTube I feel like doing anymore, but I also feel like God has put it on my heart to do this. And because of that, I do want to be consistent with this. Recently in a comment, I was told that I was alluding to the potential of having a Jezebel spirit. And all day long today, I have been haunted by the reminder um, the day that I graduated with my doctorate, my mom looked at me and told me that I should get a job at Hooters. I would finished eight years of school and my mom told me I should get a job at Hooters. Um, I've been a Christian for a very long time and I don't know if it's my job to say whether I was saved or not, but I've believed in Jesus as long as I can remember, but I was a carnal Christian. I knew who Jesus was. Um, I believed that he was God in flesh, but I knew very, very, very little about who this Jesus person was and why deep down in my heart and soul, I believed in him. We didn't go to church. We very rarely discussed anything about God or church. We had a Bible that collected dust on my dad's speaker set. It probably still does. Um, my mother and father both profess to be Christians. They have grown vastly closer into the Lord in the last so many years, but I didn't spend a lot of time at home when I was younger. I love my family dearly, uh, but my dad was gone a lot and my mom to this day has mental health complications. Uh, currently her mind is actually going and she is by far the nicest to me that she has ever been. But throughout my childhood, I was encouraged to objectify myself. That if I wanted to be a happy woman, I needed to find a man that was gonna take care of me and that I needed to be willing to do whatever it took to find a man that would be able to take care of me. Um, now that I take care of my mom, I see her mental health impairments and issues more than ever. And they were always there, but not understood. She had a lot of emotional outbursts, is probably bipolar, um, with manic and depressant episodes. Um, my brother, whom I also love, I love all of my family, uh, he was just the type of kid that liked to find trouble sometimes. He may disagree to that now, but he definitely had a knack for trouble and would often kind of leave. And many times when I was very young, my mom would exert her frustrations in life on me, physically, uh, emotionally, mentally, um, in a lot of different ways. So my dad worked a lot and my brother was not around a lot and I didn't like being home when I didn't have to be, to be honest. Um, I've always been a nerd. I've always been someone that loved books. Um, and I've always felt this need to please people and probably particularly men, but maybe for no reason other than my fear and confusion regarding my relationship with my mom. And I've always been a tomboy, so I've played mostly with the boys. And being a very athletic person, an active person, especially with a mother that encouraged me to just flaunt myself. Um, I remember a time when I would go dance in Mexico and I came home in a skirt one night and my mom asked me if I danced in the cages in Mexico. And I said, no, because I was wearing a skirt. And she said, oh, that's when you dance in a skirt in the cages. Um, I think that my mom is a truly miraculous and wonderful loving person, but she does have some mental uh, disabilities. She's become more alert and aware to the fact that she has a problem, but um, growing up in a military household, we didn't ever have encouragement to discuss our issues and imperfections, but to present our best self. And I've always tried to do so. I've always tried to put on a strong face and present myself with confidence, even when I didn't have it. And because we moved every year or two, I always wanted to be good at making friends and having a social life, but I deeply to this day really do love people. And I also do deeply believe in spiritual warfare. And lately there's been more going on in my life that would make you not want to love people anymore just because there's so much hate and evil and wickedness in the world. But I do understand as a Christian that we are all fallen. None of us are perfect, none of us are great. And as a Christian woman, I don't wanna to wait to be perfect and blameless and holy to do my best to serve God because I'm never going to be. My holiness doesn't have anything to do with me, but my holiness has to do with whom I put my faith in. And I put my faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, the risen King, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And 
about five years ago or so, I got baptized. I began to go to church on a very regular basis. I began to not just be a carnal Christian, but I wanted to dedicate my life to God. I started to buy Bibles and read the Bible and talk about God and pray openly. And I became in love with church and I began to transform. And I've talked about this previously. I know that not everybody has seen or even understands even now while I talk about this. To this day, I do not like to be with clothing that is restrictive. Um, I was in a very abusive relationship my first six years out of my home. Um, my partner at the time often would choke me. And because of that, I really don't like things near my neckline. This is fine. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses for who I am and the mistakes that I make on a regular basis. I know that I do make a lot of mistakes and I think it's worth me saying something and not just pretending like I don't acknowledge the comments that I do see because they definitely weigh on me, they definitely burden my heart, and they are important to me. It's not that I don't acknowledge the things that I'm told. I think that we should acknowledge them. But I also find it interesting when I see fitness influencers that wear very little clothing, and no, I'm not particularly bothered by it, but then they profess to be a Christian and it's applauded. But if it's a person that wants to pro profess Jesus on a regular basis, they get consistently condemned. And I know that in a not long ago video, I wore a t-shirt that was a little bit deeper in the neckline. And I don't think that that will be the last time that that ever happens because I am myself. And when I edited that video, I did my best to move the text in a way that it would be higher up and do my best to cover myself via text. But sometimes I do wear t-shirts and sometimes I do wear shorts. And there are women that maybe they get married in their wedding day and they are now showing their chest. And maybe they don't do that very often, but they do that day. Maybe they, there's a Christian woman that is on Dancing with the Stars and now she's wearing dancing clothes and it's okay then. It seems like it's very unfair that there are standards that are not consistent across the board. And no, as a Christian woman, I don't want to do or say anything that is going to make my brothers and sisters stumble. But I also think it's worth people being aware that sometimes words that are meant hopefully in love, what they end up doing is pushing people away from wanting to profess their faith from wanting to work for the Lord because when I read those comments and I understand that I'm doing my best to try to um, portray a woman that does love God and I do love God and because I love God I'm very hurt when I offend somebody while I'm trying to spread the gospel but I can't wait to be perfect to spread the gospel I can't and nor should anyone else we're not perfect I am not perfect I'm going to continue to make mistakes because my sanctification my sanctification process is not done until the day I die and I still have a very long way to go um, but I do give thanks to those who are loving and kind and I'm going to continue to leave my email address um, in the captions if you would like to continue to give me words of criticism because the Bible says to come to one another privately at first and I know that I'm in a public space and I, I'm not against public comments. There are so many Christian women that work to serve the Lord now and yes many of them are much better at it than I am and I think that a lot of them probably have been doing it longer. Um, they might have more support, they might have a better church, I, I really don't know. But I know my story and I know that it hurts me to disservice God and to disservice and to disrespect the Holy Word. It really, really breaks my heart and it really makes me not want to continue to read the Bible here. It makes me not want to profess my faith. It makes me want to cower and I can be myself and not be criticized as harshly as I am to be told that I have a Jezebel spirit because my shirt cuts low. Oftentimes I really don't like shirts that are like this because for years on end, I was choked. Um, again, I don't want to give excuses. I just think sometimes it'd be nice for people to understand that there's a little more to it. Um, there's a little more to other people's situations and stories. There are professional swimmers that are Christians that wear swimsuits. There are professional bodybuilders that are Christians. There are professional models that are Christians. And this is my living room. I think when you read the Bible, we should all come to stand. And I do think that when we go to church, we should try to look our best. But at the same time, when I go to church and I wear a dress or I look my best, I feel like I'm not allowed to kneel on the ground to pay my respect and to praise God the way that my heart cries out to do so. I don't think that women should be overly condemned for everything that they wear, everything that they say. We are not perfect. We are not perfect. No one is. Even the people that have thousands of people watching their videos and they have huge platforms, maybe they did a much better job polishing themselves before they decided to serve the Lord, but I don't want to wait. And I am 
grateful for the criticism because I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to improve, but I don't want to hide my beliefs and I don't want to not serve the Lord just because of the hateful comments that come in. And I'm not wanting to take them down. If they ever do come down, sometimes it's not me that takes them down. I do know that YouTube will sometimes do so, but I also don't want to distract from the purpose of why I'm here. And I'm not here to talk about myself, or my wardrobe, what I do, what I say, how I act. I know I'm a wretched, awful, despicable sinner. I am probably the worst human being you will ever meet. And I am probably the worst Christian woman that you will ever see. But I was encouraged when I was growing up to present myself as property. I've been treated as property most of my life. And I don't love myself, like myself, enjoy who I am and what I see. I'm very uncomfortable when I'm wearing a lot of clothes because I run hot. I have mounds of excuses and none of them matter. But what does matter is that Jesus died for my sins. And that I am new in Christ to crucify my flesh and to walk in the spirit. Yes, I make mistakes and I am very sorry for them. But I don't want those mistakes to encourage me to quit serving the Lord. I plan to put together a more organized video that I know most of these YouTubers are doing that. I'm just sitting on my couch, pouring out my heart, picking out my fingernails, awkwardly just going for it and trying to share that sometimes Christian love comes across a lot like Christian hate. I know a lot of people do not want to become Christians because of hypocrisy, negativity, this ego and pride of I'm so perfect. Um, one of the comments I read said something like, um, unlike us, that people are taking the gospel seriously and wanting to defend the Bible and their standing. Unlike, I'm unlike them who takes the gospel seriously. I'm unlike them who cares about the Bible. I don't remember the comment particularly, but it was like, I'm not one of you who loves Jesus. I'm not one of you who cares about the gospel. My life has torn me down so many times. Everyone and everything that matters to me has hurt me so bad. But God, but God, God is my hope. God is my why. And I know I'm not good enough. I'm reminded of this all the time. And I might not be good enough for you. Um, I know there are plenty of resources where you can listen to the Bible with someone who you can't see. Um, with someone reading the King James version of the Bible perfectly and eloquently and flawlessly. I'm sure you can find people that are reading in the pulpit standing in a suit. But I love God and I'm on a journey to draw closer to Him and not further away. So if you want to criticize me for my imperfections, please continue to do so. Because I do want to grow. I do want to improve upon myself. But I will never be perfect. I will always fall short of the glory and holiness of God, but I will not let it cause me to quit. I will not let it encourage me to not talk about God and what he's done for me. I will not quit reading the Bible by myself or talking about God in public because he has saved a wretch like me. And I was once a person who professed to be a Christian, but lived like everybody else. And God continued to love me. And I continue to make so many mistakes. I continue to sin. I continue to wrestle with sin. I continue to be an embarrassment to so many and to myself. But I will not quit boasting in the Lord. If I would have started my Christian journey in faith and in hopeful service to the Lord and my heart was in the right place and I was a sports illustrated swimsuit model, if I had to continue to do so, I don't know what would happen. Eventually, I would probably have quit. And part of the journey is getting closer and closer to God, but it is very difficult to live in a fleshy world and to work and to live and to thrive and to not compromise your Christian morals. Pretty much the only jobs that I know of where you can continue to really serve the Lord in all of your heart and soul and all of your mind and all of your powers in ministry. And I don't deserve a position there yet. Maybe someday I will. Maybe someday I can do full-time ministry, but I'm not there yet. And maybe God is going to do something miraculous with this. But if you are a Christian woman and you wear a bikini and you wear a tank top and you wear shorts, I know of very good male pastors that I've seen in tank tops and shorts and I've seen them not perfectly polished. I've seen a lot of things in my life and so many resources are out there. If you wish to look at things that are perverse, it's easier to find porn probably than ever. So if my low cut shirt offends you, I am very sorry. I'm very sorry. Um, my input that I've received on this channel has definitely really made me want to not do this anymore. 
but God told me he wanted me to do it. I don't know if I'm going to share this or polish it or add more and do more research, which I think I should. Because I know that there are a lot of Christian women out there that have been to a family picnic or something and they've worn a tank top or a low-cut shirt or something. And maybe I should wear something that covers all of my arms and all of my legs and all of my face. But I don't matter. I don't matter. The Bible matters. God matters. Being saved by the works of Jesus Christ on the church on the cross matter. And wherever you are at or I'm at on my journey, it is by the grace of God that we continue to walk and fall and get up and walk and fall and get up and try our best to stay on the narrow path. We should encourage one another in love. Because Christianity should be about love, loving one another, encouraging one another, and doing it in a loving manner that doesn't make people want to quit professing their faith and quit spreading the gospel. If I profess Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior and I make a mistake, I am sorry. And Jesus still loves me. And that's one of the best parts about being a Christian. I'm not a hypocrite because I am as dirty and wretched and evil and wicked and nasty as the next person, if not worse. I don't want to pretend to be perfect because I'm not. My ego is pathetic. My pride is not in me, but it's in my risen king. And in that, I can boast and I can continue to press on for the crown of life that really matters. If you would like to join me on this journey, continue to join me in reading through the Bible. And um, there are a lot of other channels that are more perfect than I am. I'm not pretending to be perfect. I just, I hope and pray that you understand that. God bless and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.